Hi, I'm Bill Hodges, and this is Travel Today, a program designed to help you travel without having to spend a lot of money. We have with us today, Gary Mull. Gary, glad to have you on the program. Good to be here, Bill. Thank you. You're administrator for a group called Friends in Route. What is Friends in Route, and how can it save our people money? Well, at its core, Friends in Route is an organization of friends that provide reasonable and comfortable accommodations for each other when we travel. It's a whole lot of fun, and it's a great way to save money when you travel. Over the very expensive hotel bills, I don't know if you've done any traveling lately, but if you've stayed in a hotel, the prices don't get any lower. They, they keep going up and up. So it's a great way to save money, as you mentioned, but it's also a great way to meet people. You know, it's such a great way. In fact, that's how I decided to put you on the program, because in full disclosure, I became a member of the group. And my wife Phyllis and I have enjoyed 26 nights traveling last year with people we'd never met before. That's a strange concept. <laughs> it sure is to a lot of people. And in fact, a lot of people say, well, I don't know about this whole thing, staying with people I don't know and maybe having people I don't know stay with me. But in my view, a stranger is just a friend that you haven't met yet. We found it was fascinating because before when we traveled, we'd go from one location to the next hotel to the next hotel. And really, we weren't really looking forward to getting to the next hotel and the hassles <laughs> of it. But now we look forward to meeting these new people. Absolutely. Having traveled for a living for many years, it's very interesting because you go to these cities, you go to Nashville, you go to Washington, D.C., you go out to San Diego, and people say, well, what did you think of San Diego? And I was thinking to myself, you know what, San Diego looked a whole lot like Nashville. <laughs> it looked a whole lot like Washington, D.C. I was seeing the inside of hotel rooms, and I totally changed my philosophy now. I try to go and visit with people and friends and route, and they can tell you, hey, before you leave town, you absolutely have to see such and such, or you have to eat at this restaurant, because it's just fantastic. A lot of times they'll ask you to go with them. Oh, absolutely. And be sure, a lot of people are willing to, to give you a tour of the town, um, but at the, at the very least, you have some insider information when you get into the town. What is there to see? What are the great days to go down to visit a certain thing that you want to see, and what are the days to maybe stay away from downtown, because the traffic is going to be a parking lot. Who can belong to Friends and Root? Is it open to anybody anywhere? It's open to anybody who's over the age of 40. 40? You bet. Okay. And we, we say that because most of the people who are in that range are people who have the uh, wherewithal to travel and also people who are at the age where they've become comfortable with meeting other people and meeting new people not only in their home but in, in visiting other people as well. It's interesting that Phyllis and I found that the membership are at least modest to higher income, people who could actually afford hotels, but rather do this. this We've stayed in some beautiful homes. Now this is true. Is that across the board with the group? It is across the board with a group. And that's not to say you have to have a mansion in order to join Friends and Route. But what we find is that people who are of higher income brackets tend to gravitate towards this kind of an organization. Because it, if you think about it, those people who are comfortable meeting people and who, who deal well with people tend to be in the higher income ranges. It's, it's all about communication and, and making friends and networking. And the same types of people, I think, gravitate towards both. Are many of the members referred by other members? Every member is referred by another member. And we have any, no one who just came off the street and decided, well, today I'm going to join Friends and Route. It's all a referral network. And that's a great thing because you know who knows who. And so when you talk to somebody on the phone, even for the first time, you, know, you can look at their member record and find out, well, who's the person that asked them to join this organization? And so it's, it makes it nice that way. And you have a connection instantly. Is it expensive to join Friends and Route? It's very inexpensive. In fact, you can be a charter member for right now for $20 and uh, the dues are, are eventually going to go up uh, it'll be about $55 a year but for now uh, for the next two years you can be a member of our organization for just $20 and as I understand it charter members you never raise the fees on I never if raise you're the in fees. that first group of people you never have a fee increase you never have a fee increase so from here on out once your two years is up, you can make a decision if you'd like to continue with the organization. And from that point on, your dues will never be any higher than $20 a year. Can I give you a check or 
pay you cash to yeah, join. Yeah, we don't You're take here. checks. <laughs> We've got people in the studio who'd probably like to be part of this. <laughs> well, since I know you, Bill, I might consider that. But you're already a member. And uh, honestly, we don't take checks and we don't take cash. The reason for that is we want to make sure that you're you. And uh, one of the checks that we have on our members, because we don't do background checks, we don't do security checks or anything like that, but we want to make sure that you are the person you say you are on your credit card. And of course, when you sign up, there will be a picture of your home on the, the website. And so it's a, a network of friends. We all get to know each other that way. And that way it builds trust, it builds relationships, and it builds a network of friends uh, that are truly extending hands to each other and helping each other out. I found it interesting when I went on the website to plan a trip that if I found someone on the map in a city I wanted to go to and I clicked on it, it would take me to Google Map and the Google Map would show me the house, the streets around it. Exactly. And it was so easy. Mm. And so when I drove into the driveway, I wasn't driving into a strange house. I was driving into one that I really recognized but that's only in the member section. Not everybody can do that, No, right? it's, it's private information only for our members. And it's, the, neat, the really neat thing about it is not only can you see the house that you'll be staying in, but you can get a view of the neighborhood. So when you get off the, if you put your GPS in and it kind of, sometimes, I don't know if your GPS is like mine, <laughs> sometimes takes me on a goose chase, but you can say, well, this looks familiar. I think I've seen this before. So you know you're in the right place. And perhaps you want to find a mailbox Maybe you have something to drop in the mail when you're there. You can actually do a little tour using Google Earth and uh, using the streets and trips and so on and go through and, and actually take a look around the street, find out if there's a, a local establishment nearby and those sorts of things. Is this just a local organization or is it spread across the United States? We are a worldwide organization. Worldwide. We have okay. members in approximately 25 countries. We have members in about 30 states out of the 50 and we have members in almost every Canadian province. So we are a worldwide organization. That is really nice. And when you go stay with someone, do you have to pay them anything? Is there a gratuity or anything like we that? Ask a gratuity. I know the answer to that, but you go ahead. <laughs> we, we ask a gratuity of $10 if you stay by yourself. If you're going as a couple, we ask for a gratuity of $15. Now, that doesn't go to us. No. That goes to your host family, and it kind of defrays some of the expenses that you'll naturally have when you host people. You want to run the vacuum cleaner before they come, probably, <laughs> so you have a little bit of electricity, and you want to wash the sheets, obviously, when, after they leave. But I guess the majority of that cost goes to cover breakfast. And that breakfast can be anywhere from a donut and a cup of coffee to some people prefer to, to have or to prepare a very large breakfast and very tasty. Oh, well, we've had some beautiful homes we've stayed in and beautiful breakfasts we've eaten. And other times somebody had to get off the work. And so they gave us a quick breakfast or croissant maybe and maybe a little bit of yogurt, a little cereal. And away we went. Well, if you come and visit me, if you have to catch a plane at 6 o'clock in the morning, I will show you where the <laughs> coffee maker is, <laughs> even put coffee in it for you, and I'll show you where the bagels are. But if you're going to stay later and you have a little bit more time, I'm glad to make you my special omelet. So I love to spend time chatting with you over breakfast, if you have the time to do that. And on the website, friendsandroot.com, there is some tutorials that show you how to plan trips and things of that nature, correct? There are tutorials that will show you just how to use it. It's not difficult to figure out. If you spend a few minutes with it, look at the tutorial, you can go through and, and it really makes it easy to plan a trip. Uh, the important thing to this is to make sure you communicate with your host ahead of time and before you even communicate with them, there's a list of the things that are on there, the things to see in the town that they thought were interesting to note, uh, the type of breakfast you can expect. Maybe they burn water when they put it on, so they're not <laughs> going to promise you anything, but it'll, it'll tell you that up front. You get a continental breakfast or uh, we'll bring donuts in or something like that. So you have all that information up front and it's very, very easy to use. Gary, we're down to about a minute here. Is there anything else that you think from the administrator standpoint that we really need to get across? Well, one of the things I would stress to people is if you've not done anything like this before, give it a try. A lot of people are nervous their first time. In fact, I think that's universal. You know, the first time I did something like this, I was a little nervous because you, you know, I think it comes from courtesy. You don't want to offend anybody. You don't want to bother anybody or step on their toes. But the first time you do it, you'll be hooked because you meet such wonderful people. It's a great opportunity to get to know new folks. It's a great opportunity to save a little money, and it's a great opportunity to, to spread your wings and see some areas of the country that you wouldn't have ordinarily been able to afford to do. Gary Mull, Administrator for Friends and Root, thank you so much for coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, Phyllis and I spent 26 days on the road last year. It cost us $365 for breakfast and a place to sleep. 
We have made so many new friends. It's a fantastic thing. Give it a try. Go to the website, poke around, read a bit, look at some of the videos. I'm Bill Hodges. You're unique, you're special, and you're great. Tell yourself so often, because you are, you know. We'll see you again on the next travel show.